Hi, the topic is dynamic programming. In this video, I'll give you introduction to dynamic programming, give you differences between dynamic programming and greedy method. And also I will show the difference between memoization and tabular method by taking an example in detail. Let us know the difference between greedy method and dynamic programming, which is very, very important. Greedy method and dynamic programming both are used for solving optimization problems. Both are different strategies, but the purpose is same. Optimization problems are those which requires either minimum result or maximum result. The methods are different. In greedy method, we try to follow predefined procedure to get the optimal result. The procedure is known to be optimal. We follow the procedure to get best result like Kruskal's method for finding minimum cost spanning tree. Always select a minimum cost edge and that gives us best result. Or Dijkstra shortest path algorithm. Always select a shortest path vertex and continue relaxing the vertices so you get a shortest path. So there is a predefined procedure. But in dynamic programming, we'll try to find out all possible solutions and then pick up the best solution, the optimal solution. This approach is different and it is little time consuming compared to greedy method. For any problem, there may be many solutions which are feasible. So we'll try out all those solutions and then pick up the best one. And mostly dynamic programming problems are solved by using recursive formulas. Though we will not use a recursion of programming, but the formulas are recursive. If we want, we can use recursion also, but mostly they are solved using iteration. And dynamic programming follows principle of optimality. Principle of optimality says that a problem can be solved by taking sequence of decisions to get the optimal solution. So now I can highlight one difference here. In greedy method, decision is taken one time that we will do it like this and we follow that procedure. In greed dynamic programming, every stage we take a decision. So this point you can understand only while solving the problem. So while solving the problem, I'll show you perfectly how dynamic programming is working there to solve a problem. Let us see how dynamic programming adopts tabulation method or memoization, difference between tabulation and memoization. I have an example function here. This is the recursive definition of a Fibonacci term. And this is a function or an algorithm for finding Fibonacci term. And it is a recursive function. The definition itself is recursive. So the function is recursive. So what is Fibonacci series? It starts from zero and one, one. Every term is obtained by adding previous two terms. So two plus one, that is three and 2 plus 3 that is 5 and 5 plus 3 that is 8 and this is 13 and so on. So this is 0th term, first term, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and goes on. Suppose I want to know 10th term of Fibonacci series, then call this function. This function will give us 10th term. Now I'll show you how this function works if I want to find out any term because the function is recursive. So let us trace this function. When I call this function for Fibonacci of five, fifth term I want to find out. If I trace this, n is less than or equal to one. No, it is not less than or equal to one. If so, then it will return n only. Otherwise, it will call two functions, add their results and return the results. So what are those two functions it is calling? It is calling itself for Fibonacci of three and Fibonacci of four so first of all it will call this one right then that one so if we see this again it will enter inside and then it's not less than or equal to one so it will call itself for two times for three minus two that is fib of one and then fib of two then out of this it will pick up this call first so fib of one directly we get the answer one so this is one then it will come this side so there are two calls here this is fib of 0 and fib of 1. For fib of 0 and fib of 1, there is no recursive call. Direct result is return. So here the function terminates. Then it will add these two terms and give the result. It will add these two terms and give the result. Then this side it has to continue. 
So on this side again for Fibonacci of 4 it will call itself for Fibonacci of 2 and this side for Fibonacci of 3. But first of all this is done. So this is Fib of 0 and Fib of 1. This side Fib of 1 and Fib of 2. Again this is Fib of 0 and Fib of 1. This will be the tracing tree of that particular function. So for finding Fib of 5, it is making total 15 calls. Now if I consider all the calls and find out the time complexity of this one. So from the function, if I see this is n minus 2 and that is n minus 1. If I assume roughly it is n minus 1 only, then I can prepare a recurrence relation for this one. What it will be? Tn is equals to, it is calling itself for two times. Let us assume n minus 1 only. So 2 Tn minus 1. Though this is n minus 2, but if we take n minus 2, we cannot come to the conclusion. So I am taking it as 1, right? Approximately. So this is 2 Tn minus 1. And what it is doing every time? Just adding. So this is the recurrence relation. And by master's theorem for decreasing function, if you take, this is big O of 2 power n. Like this is not exact, it is n minus 2, it is less. I have taken n minus 1 only, so this is upper bound for that function. So the time taken by this function is big O of 2 power n. Right, recurrence relation. How to prepare? There is a video available, you can watch that one. So how to prepare a recurrence relation? So this recurrence relation is big O of 2 power n. Means if I call this Fibonacci function, it will take so much time, 2 power n, exponential time. Is there any way to reduce the time? Let us observe. See in this function f of 1, fib of 1, 1, 1. So many times it is being called. So many times. So if I take fib of 2, it is called here and here and here. Why to call the same function again and again for the same parameter? Why can't we reduce this one? So yes. With this idea, we can reduce the function calls and reduce the time taken by this Fibonacci function. So what I'll do is, I'll try to store the result of Fibonacci function so that once it is called for Fib of 2, it should not be called again. So let me show you how it can be done. We will take one global array. Let us say I have an array. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have an array. Initially, I will fill this array with minus 1 because nothing is known. Now, let me trace this fun tree once again, not function. I have to modify the function, but I will not modify it. Just from the tree, I will show you. First function is called fib of 5, minus 1. We don't know. So, make the calls. So, first call is this one, fib of 3 minus 1. We don't know. Call the function. So, fib of 1. Do we know this? No. So, call the function. So, what is the result of the function when value is 1? It is 1. So, mark it as 1. So, this is completed. Then go back. Fib of 2. Do we know the answer for this one? Fib of 2? No. Call this fib of 0. Do we know the answer for this one? No. Fib of 0 function is called. So, it is less than 1. So, it will return 0 only. So, this becomes 0. Then, fib of 1, till here the calling is done, fib of 1, we already know fib of 1, don't call this function. Then, this result is how much? 0, this value is how much? 1. So, add this and return the result. So, this becomes 1. So, fib of 2 also becomes 1 now, this one. Then, this result, fib of 1 is 1, 1 plus 1, we know this result. So, add this and get the result for this 2, fib of 3 is stored, that is 2. Now come to this side. See one function was skipped. Fib of 4, do we know? We don't know. Then let us call the function. Fib of 2, shall we call? No, we already know the result. So don't call this function. So all these functions will not be called. This is already 1. Then Fib of 3, do we know? Yes, we know the answer. Don't call all these functions. Don't call these functions. So first of all, this is not called. So automatically these are also not called. What is the result of this? This is 2. Then these two are added. 1 plus 2. So this becomes 3. This becomes 3. Now adding of these two is done. 2 plus 3. That is 5. 5. That's all. If we count the number of calls now. This is 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5. This is not called. 6. That's all. Total 6 calls. So when I have given fib of n, so it is making how many calls? n plus 1 calls. So n plus 1 calls is what? Order of n. Now, theta of n or big O of n, whatever you say, notations. So this is order of n. See, this is memoization. This is the result of memoization. By storing the results of the function, we are avoiding the same call once again. Like fib of 2 already stored, don't call it again. Fib of 3 already found, don't call it again. How do you know it is already found? We can store the result in some array. So this function we can modify. The calls are made here. I can make them as conditional calls. So based on condition, the calls are made and the results are stored in an array. So the number of calls are reduced. We can see that memoization has reduced the time from 2 power n to n. So from 2 power n to n. So exponential to polynomial back to linear. So in this example, there is a big change. In other examples, at least there will be some difference. Memoization will bring some difference. This is the approach of memoization. And in this, we can see this. The tree is generated and the function calls are avoided and the result is obtained back. Right. So from here we started. So we say this is top down approach. So memoization follows top down approach. If we want, we can follow this in dynamic programming, but we don't use this. We use iterative method mostly that is tabulation method. The same problem, how I can solve it using tabulation method, I'll show you now. Here is an iterative function that is using loop, same function for finding Fibonacci series or nth term of Fibonacci series. See the formula f of n minus 2 and n minus 1, the same formula is used, but this is using loop. Let us see how this function works if I have to find out fib of 5, that is fifth term I want to find out. So it will enter inside here. If n is less than or equal to 1, it will return that same thing. Means if it is 0 or 1, directly I am returning. Otherwise, it will fill f of 0 as 0. This is 0 as 0. f of 1 as 1. This is 1. Then the loop starts from i value as 2 onwards. So I will start from 2 onwards. So 2 to n, n is what 5 in our example. So 2 to n it will go and every time for getting any ith term it will add previous two terms. So for getting this term it will add these two terms. So this is i minus 2 and this is i minus 1. Add it. So this is 1. Next is i plus plus. So i moves to next and add these two. Then i plus plus. Add these two. Then add these two. So it returns f of n. n is what 5. So f of 5. That is answer is 5. Fifth term is 5 only here. This is how a table is generated by this function. So this is how we write the algorithms for dynamic programming. We write mostly iterative functions only which will fill up the table to get the values. And the filling is done from which on which value onwards. See from smaller value onwards. So we say this is bottom up approach. We wanted 5, so we started from 0 onwards and we reach 5. Whereas in recursion, if you recall, this was starting from 5, then it was calling fib of 3 and fib of 4. So from top it was starting, then it was going till bottom, then it was coming back again. So it was a top down, but this is from 0 it has started first. So this is bottom up approach. So the approach are different, mostly tabulation is used. If you want to frame it as recursion, you can frame them as recursion also. Uh, that's all. This is the difference between tabulation method and previously I have already shown you memoization. So any of these methods can be used, but mostly the problems are solved using tabulation method in dynamic programming. The main important thing in dynamic programming is that we should get the approach for solving the problem. So if you get the idea how the strategy is working, then you can solve any other problem which is suitable for dynamic programming. You can devise your own approach. Right. So I'll be focusing on that one. How to get the idea of solving a problem. So watch next video on problems of dynamic programming.